Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you would be so kind as to uh, have one of our seats in this wonderful ballroom, auditorium, basketball court. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for, for coming. I, uh, you know, I've been on a job 11 days, and one of the first things I wanted to do was to get the business community, first of all, to understand that that door downstairs is open. I'm, never, I'm not going to give you all the right answers, but I will always listen. And I was always respect your opinion and try to figure out how do we make your business thrive, both for you, for your employees, and for the community as a whole. So that's my first pledge to you. Until the middle of November, there's an open door down there. Hopefully, whoever gets it after will keep the door wide open as well. I don't have a lot of things to say, but I'm going to bring a few things up. And then after that, it's a listening tour. I've asked department heads to come, and I've got a few from the planning. I know we got some from the health department, the fire department. I know several others who couldn't make it are going to, we're going to be, uh, Hoyo Media is going to be covering this, and they already told me they'll be reviewing it. One of my goals at the end is to make sure we all get together and find out, all right, what do we need to do? A couple of other things I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to help your employees get vaccinated. So, I know we have a, a clinic that we do at the senior center every Wednesday, and, and that's for Hoyoke residents only. But I want to encourage you to, I think it's from two to, excuse me, 10 to two. And I know sometimes employees are having a hard time getting out of work. I want to encourage you to help them Get, the, get to the vaccine. Long term, they're going to make better employees because they're not going to get sick. It's going to be better for our economy because we're going to get back to normal. So I just want to encourage you to do that. We are also going to have uh, mobile vaccines from the Hoyoke Health Center starting, I believe, in about a week, a week and a half. And they'll be going around the city. I'll certainly be making announcements about that. We've got to attack this. We've got to stay together. And we've got to try to get as many people as healthy and as protected as we can, both for our economy and for our sanity. I also want to encourage, and I've asked Jesus Pereira from the Veterans Office. I know he's here. He's in the back there. I want to encourage you to reach out to him. If you have employment needs, he's got connections to veterans organizations to help who are looking for jobs, who have experience, who have skills. He can help tie you into some veterans that are looking to get jobs. And obviously, I want to make sure that we can, when we can, that we do that. Lastly, I just want to let you know we got a few things coming up. Office of Planning and Development and Community Development. We got some facade improvement money that I've signed off on. <laughs> for the downtown area to help improve the image of downtown. Uh, that'll be starting July 1st. And we also have some small business grants. So all of those things, you know, we want to help you thrive. We're all in this together. And again, I just want to thank you for coming. When you do want to make a comment, <clears throat> and I swear talking with a mask is awfully tough. Some people say it covers your face. That's good, Terry. That's not very nice that they say that to me. I want, if you would, I'd like you to come up here. I also want to thank Councillor Tallman, Councillor Sullivan, Representative Duffy, and I think, and I've asked people who are policymakers to also come and listen. So, when you have a thought, this is open discussion. Criticism, that's fine. Just make it constructive with respect. Everything I'm going to try to do in this city is going to be with respect. All right, so I, I want to hear your comments. I'm going to use those comments to establish some policies to make sure we're doing things as effectively and efficiently as we can. So again, my thanks for coming. 
I know it's a beautiful day. You could be outside saying, oh, nice spring day. Some of you could be on a golf course, whatever. But you're here. Thank you. So whoever wants to be the first one, there's the mic. Don't be bashful. Hi, Terry. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, for calling us. This is great. I'm so glad that you were uh, put in this position. Um, I'm not going to talk about past administration, but I do want to say, uh, John Brunell, b, b Real Estate, um, and one of the things, our greatest, one of our two greatest resources, or three, I would say, you know, the people of Poyoke itself, but also um, our water, water department that we have, but, you know, one of our greatest is our gas and electric department. I see Jim here, and um, we really uh, dropped the ball last administration with not expanding or being able to work something out with um, uh, Columbia, which was former Columbia uh, Gas, to be able to get um, uh, the expansion of the uh, uh, gas lines for Hoyoke. Now, the one that Hoyoke is on, and Jim will explain it more better uh, later on, but we really need to start the process of letting them know that there's a new administration in, and I'm glad to hear that candidates for mayor, some of them that were totally against it before, are now changing their, their tune. But we've lost so many opportunities for housing and for businesses, especially a lot of the growers um, in this city, for the uh, marijuana growers, to come to this city and use the actual gas um, for their heat and um, and that is an economic engine that no other community really has like ours with our gas and electric and I and it, talking to Jim it still is going to take us another couple of years even if we get um, together with Eversource who bought uh, Columbia to get you know favor with them so we can you know hopefully get some of their gas until uh, other things are, are done in the future so you know our state legislators here the past, I'm not sure what they did in the past to um, previous legislators to push that through, um, but that gas line and that expanding of the pipe is crucial to Hoyoke's future. And I, I think we've lost multiple, you know, from talking to Jim, like a hundred different properties that could have been serviced by that. It helps the new business and also helps the people that have been here before. So to me, that's like a number one concern to to uh, grow this community. So uh, thank you again for having this meeting, and thank you. Okay, thank you, and, and let me just say, when I get through with this meeting, my next meeting today is already scheduled at three o'clock with Mr. Lavelle, so we we are trying to do what we can, and I know Jimmy's work, Mr. Lavelle is working uh, to try to find the best options that we can have, uh, and again, we're also trying to make sure that we do keep going towards clean energy, more clean energy, but we need to have economic development and we need to find ways to make sure we can maintain that while still improving our, our environmental and health quality. So, and that's one of the goals and I will be meeting with uh, Jim at three o'clock. So you're not, a, you're not entitled to come to that meeting though. Next. How about in terms of as you work with city departments, what, what has gone well, what hasn't gone well? What can we do better? Man, we're doing way too well then. I mean, I, I have heard people trying to make sure that we have a one-step process, and I've already started talking to various uh, departments that have impact on development both for new and for expanding, uh, and we're going to try it. But you, if you give us your comments, we have a much better way or a much better chance of assuring that we design and provide a one-step process as quickly as possible. Can you hear me OK? Hi, uh, so my name is Andrea and I'm the owner of a business that is moving to Holyoke 
And I would like to um, agree that a one-step process or a process that had a little bit more clarity in terms of obtaining the correct permits and doing your due diligence and understanding um, the process would be extremely helpful. Um, to your question about working with different departments, um, I would say that it is somewhat fragmented in trying to understand, you know, when you're tying into natural gas and now you have um, to have interruptible services, when you're trying to tie into all of the, those utilities, you're working with different departments. And depending on the department, I would say, you know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being great, I've had experiences at 10, and I've also had experiences closer to two or three. Um, and so that really just depends on the department and possibly the people that are working at the department and their willingness to really engage with new business owners. So I would encourage the city to look toward some kind of comprehensive guide. Um, I looked at on the city's website today in preparation for this meeting and, you know, there, there are um, some sections, you know, if you're a restaurant, if you're a nightclub, but if you actually look at what's on the website, it, it's not entirely uh, accurate and a lot of the links don't exist. In fact, probably 90% of the links don't even exist to telling you how you're supposed to do it. So I think in an attempt to make it more streamlined, somebody tried that, but it doesn't seem like it actually is a successful process. Um, and so, yeah, as somebody that's trying to move their business here to the city and has already hired new people from the city to work for us, um, I would say that engaging with the city and trying to uh, make this our home and, and be collaborative has been uh, quite a headache. Thank you for those comments, and I, I appreciate the, the honesty of the comments, and, and I want honesty. Don't, don't try to silver coat anything. I want to make sure we know. And, and that is something I, I will be meeting with all the departments that have something to do with coordinating, allowing you to make the investment you want to make, allowing you to get the building that you want to build, all those kind of things. I want to make sure that we get that. And I will also, and Andres, make sure we talk about websites but I want to make sure that when you go there and you want to start a business, you want to get a permit, it's, it's a pretty easy process. Here you click here and this is going to tell you step one, two, three, four, who you need to talk to, what you can do, as much as possible. Now, again, I'll let the department heads tell me what's possible. The other thing I will tell you very clearly, I, I never want to see anyone feel like they were disrespected by anyone in this city. Uh, employment responsibility. We, we, we need to help each other. And everybody has a bad day, you know, but you always treat people with respect. And that's something, if I ever, if you have complaints about how you're treated, I want to know. It's not that I want to get rid of people. I want to make sure people are understanding the negative impact that that can have. So. Everybody, from the smallest kid to the most affluent business person to the senior citizen, and everybody in between deserves respect. So we are gonna to try to make the process smoother. I wanna thank you for your commitment already, and I wanna encourage you to come see me anytime I can make that commitment easier for you to do. Hello, Mr. Mayor. My name is sorry. Hello, Mr. Mayor. My name is Ezra. I'm of Nod Brews Corp. We just recently moved into uh, Hoyle in December, and I moved my residency to Hoyle also. So my biggest thing is that I work with the eFall program and the Roca program, and I'm hoping that those things are still a part of the administration's goal as we continue to scale up our operation because we're planning to stay in Hoyle as long as possible. But as we see our exponential sales and growth, we're able to expand, and we're hoping to make Hoyle one of our main places and if that's possible if that we're going to see any small like business grants you mentioned and seeing some growth help in that aspect first of all thank you again and thank you for for moving in as well and 
as you go along. First of all, ROCA is, I just signed a contract yesterday, so I know they're part of it. And actually, we have talked in terms of some of the jobs that go on along with the DPW and things to try to use that a little bit more so that when we, they can get additional skilled training, but also assist the city so that we're not having disruption of services. So they win by getting additional skills, we win by getting a better service. So that is definitely part of it. Uh, if you don't mind, I would love to have you just come in and set up an appointment. We could talk about everything and then see what we can do to make your, your operation better and, for, and the operation for the city better. So. Thank you. Also, I, do, a, I do appreciate you coming. Thank you. Also, as a former educator, I'm just hoping uh, with the education, the co-op programs in the high school for the vocational are able to be able to be sourced out for some of the corporations we're working with. That, I mean, you, that's ahead of the game, but <laughs> that is something I used to coach at Dean. Yeah. Okay. And I know I have a lot of people that ask me, can we provide some training on the careers that are out there that at, right now at Dean, we're not quite hitting the, what we need to hit. So that is something I do plan on talking about. By the time it gets fully resolved, I'm sure I will not be here, but uh, I do think we need to look, what, what kind of job skills do we need? And are we providing those at Dean? Or can we make some changes so that we can have a person become an entrepreneur themselves? or uh, I'm drawing a blank, but someone who works with somebody is a, all right, who's gonna help me there? Apprentice, thank you. Aaron, you get a point for that one. I don't give out a lot of points. <laughs> I already cut that out, Aaron. <laughs> so, I mean, I do wanna, and again, when I say I want to meet with you, that's sincere. If you ask Andres, I've had people come in for, a, the nine days, whatever it is, in my office. It's been from morning to afternoon to evening. And uh, I, I want, I want, when I'm done in November, I want you all to say, for an old guy, he did pretty good. And this city's in better shape than it was seven months ago. And whoever's coming in, you got a good pathway to make Hoyoke the best that it can be for all of us, and that's, that's my ultimate goal. So if I can meet and understand the problem, I got a much better chance of solving it, or at least taking steps towards solving it. Next. Hi, my name is Anthony Soto. Um, I'm the owner of Soto Home Care. That's a couple things. So one of the things, being a downtown business, I really, really wish, and I, I've been a, kind of a thorn at uh, room one for this many. Perception is everything. We really need to keep the downtown clean. It doesn't, the excuses that the wind blowing and all that stuff, I don't know what, what the answer is. They just said that ROCA program, I've seen them do a couple things, but if there would be more emphasis on cleaning downtown, I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of embarrassing. We have folks that come in from other places and you know, they bring that up, like, why is so much trash everywhere? And I'm sure um, other former counselors like uh, Brunel and them can, uh, attest to this, we got Aaron Vega over here too. We really need to, I mean, I just can't stress that enough. Another thing too, everything's gonna be great business-wise, um, but we need to we need to do more, have more commitment to our schools. You know, right now, it, it's really sad that, you know, this whole receivership thing and, and everything that's going on there. But I think as, as business community too, we need to focus on, on, on the future of these children here. Uh, Jesus Pareda has a great program. I'm a pilot, he's a pilot, um, bringing more kids to with the arrow. Uh, think little things like that will go a long way. Um, so yeah, and, and, and really, really, I think out of room one, the support for the public safety. You know, everything that's going around the world and everything else, if there was a little more showing support from the, from the um, room one, the time that you're there, and hopefully the next person will do the same. I would personally appreciate that. I'm sure all the public safety will appreciate that too. So that's my statement today. Thank you, thank you. If I can, I'll just address a few of those things. Uh, number one, my goal in, in public safety is to make sure that we are as safe as we can be, as open and honest as we can be, and as respected as we can be. And I, one of the things I am doing, and the chief knows, we're, we're, I'm gonna ask for more reports because there's a lot of good things that are happening 
that people don't know about. And unfortunately, when something bad happens, that's what people find out. So I'm trying to make sure I work. I'm sure I'm going to be critical on occasion because not everything goes right. And if it doesn't go right, I got to figure out a way to make it go right. And, and I will hold people accountable. But everybody that's out there, police, firefighters, ambulance service, all those people that are out there day to day risking their lives, that, that right there has to earn some respect. And I'll try to make sure. As far as cleaning the streets, one of my other goals here, and I know I spoke with Representative Duffy the other day about potentially accelerating our street and sidewalk repairs. We got a five-year plan that I want to fund and get it done in 18 months, but have the money that is coming in from the state pay for it over the five years that we would have the, the bond out to do it. So I want to accelerate. So when you go out there and you see your, your sidewalk is in deplorable condition, that sets a bad image. When its streets are dirty, that sets a bad image. The other thing I want to do that I think ties in psychologically to people littering and things along that lines, we got too many vacant lots and boarded up buildings. I want to see us clearing and investing so that people know, first of all, I live in that neighborhood and guess what? They care about me. They're cleaning up that neighborhood. They're going to get rid of that bad building that's a danger to the firefighters, but also to the neighborhood. And if we can do that, then we create some incentive. I'm a business person looking. I've got wide open spaces. I can envision something. When I got a boarded up building and a, uh, I won't say a vandalized, but a uh, littered uh, empty lot, it's pretty hard to say, let's go invest. I want to make sure they know we're going to build. We're going to clear and we're going to build. We're going to clear for you. You give us the opportunity. We're going to try to work with you to build. So I'm, I'm, it's all quality of life. And, and public safety, litter, uh, boarded up buildings, those do not send. Public safety, I think we do a good job in work. Uh, cleaning up the old buildings, we need to do a better job. Cleaning the streets, we need to do a better job. Having everybody respect the fact that we're all in this together. If you litter, I'm willing to tell you the next person is more likely to litter. So we need to get that, and that also starts with kids. You know, kids need to show that same thing. I, I have a difference, I make a difference. The city, city wants to help me, I want to help the community. And again, we're in, it, we're in this together. So I'm going to do all I can. And, and Roca, I think, can be part of that. And there can be other aspects that can be part of it. Hi, Mr. Mayor, congratulations. Um, my name is Mike Pratt. Yeah. I, I appreciate the Mr. Mayor, but you know what? I'm really used to Terry. So. I appreciate the respect. You can all call me Terry, and I am fine with that. Right. Not a problem. My name is Mike Pratt. I'm the owner of Polio Craft Beer. Um, we opened two years ago on Ray Street. Uh, in our second year going in, uh, we got hit with COVID, right? And we've done a great job pivoting, and we've had a lot of support from the community and surrounding communities uh, with our business. Um, we applied for some grants, um, some state grants, and we also applied for a grant through the Chamber of Commerce back in November. Um, and Jordan at the Chamber has been very helpful over the last uh, few months with that. But uh, there just seems to be a lot of roadblocks along the way, uh, unfortunately, because you know grant money for COVID relief is needed now, and uh, was needed then, uh, but it is still needed now. Um, and I, I just want to know where things stand with that, um, with the grant process. Uh, my last interaction with that whole process was there was, we were waiting on uh, and someone to be uh, hired to help manage that. Um, so if you could put that on your list, uh, something to dig into to help streamline that because um, we've pivoted, but we're going to have to pivot again and again uh, until things are really back to normal. Uh, and to pivot, you need money. Um, and you're operating outside the normal way a, a business would have designed a business plan around. So. Uh, that's one thing, and I, the, having a single point contact with 
with City Hall for businesses is definitely uh, would help. As a brewery, we are licensed with the federal government, the state government, and uh, the city, the Board of Health, License Board, you name it, we're, we're licensed. Um, and along that process, federal and state was easy. Once we got to the city aspect of it, it was very difficult. Um, and I think, you know, for business owners, you're, you're focused on running your business, not navigating uh, city hall politics and uh, dysfunction. So I think having a single point person to man help manage that with, with new um, business owners uh, would be very helpful. Um, but yeah, so anyways, that's what I have to say. And Thank you. yeah, thanks. So if I can, I'll address a couple of those things. I do know uh, on small business grants and things along that lines, we are in fact trying to get someone to administer it that would be more effective. We've had some difficulties there. I just found out about this last Friday. <laughs> so it's on my agenda. Uh, the other aspect, I, I obviously there's gonna be some federal dollars. Representative Duffy, thank you. And thank her for coming, I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. I know she had another appointment. So. Uh, so I do appreciate that part. And as far as the, the money that's going to be coming in from the federal government, uh, I, I know Congressman Neal told me in the next, probably by next week, I should have a lot of specifics as to where that money can go. Part of it, as I understand it, is to stimulate economic growth. It's also to make sure that we maintain businesses that have struggled to get through the pandemic. So there's all kinds of things. I just haven't, and he hasn't given me the specifics. Uh, it'll be handled similarly to community development program. So there's an application process, there'll be a review process, and then I've got to sign off on it. But, uh, you know, part of my goal in that money is economic development, making sure businesses can thrive, as well as revitalizing neighborhoods, making them healthier. You know, I'm a real, uh, advocate for trying to help kids get healthier, especially away from asthma, which takes them out of school, which then creates other problems. So, you know, I'm gonna do all I can. I would love for those of you that have had uh, a difficult path through the city permit structure, if you wouldn't mind, write me maybe a one-page summary this is where things went well. This is where things didn't go well. This is where I got confused and I couldn't get anybody to give me an answer. Because if I have that history, it'll allow me to say, okay, this is what I need to do with the department heads to make sure we're gonna make that path as comfortable and as easy for all of our businesses. And again, if you would be willing to send me that, I would, I'm a slow reader, but I'll read it. There you go, oh, that's good. Next. Thank you, Terry, for inviting us all here today. My name is David White. Uh, I have Ray Street Properties, and I'm also involved with rehabbing the train station. And I'd like to second what I've heard everybody say here today. And I'd like to put a word to it, I guess, which is time. The time that it takes something to happen. It's nice if you can have everybody working through a central point, but sometimes it takes time to get very simple things done. And that frustrates businessmen. It uh, makes people skip the process at times. And if somebody needs something simple or uh, a simple task, they should be able to get it when they walk in the door. If it's complicated, but there shouldn't be anything that goes on for weeks or months or years. And uh, for the gentlemen in the, uh, that are doing hiring in the town, I can tell you, we can't find enough people. We're looking for people, we're hiring right now, and we will be hiring for the rest of the year. So thank you very much. Thank you, and Jesus, I would say, uh, let's make sure you touch base. David, that's Jesus back there. I know he's got some veteran contacts that are looking for work, so there might be a, a strong connection there. Uh, I, 
I, I, my hope is that if it's a simple process, it is. You walk in, you sign your sheet, we're ready to go. If it's a more complicated process, that we can move it so that it has taken three or four months now, let's see if we can make it a month. Let's reduce that process, let's make it quicker. One other thing beyond the fact, and, and, and Mr. Vega and I have talked about this a little bit, about potentially helping out up front. Now we give TIFs at the back. After you do a project, we give you help. How about if we gave help to get the project going uh, and move the project along? No TIF at the end, but we're helping you in the beginning so you get started faster. You're, you're making money faster and you are hiring employees sooner than you do if we go the other way. And I know I've had people tell me, if I could get a little financial assistance up front, I could move this project along. So that's something we're looking at. Now, obviously, I can't do that on my own, but we are talking about how we can do it. And I did talk to the governor's Western Mass director about this the other day. He also seemed kind of intrigued about the idea. So we'll see where that goes, but I will be following up with him. Next. You're doing a good job. Don't let me down now. We've got 17 more minutes. Okay, I'm, when, the question is, when are we planning on opening City Hall? Obviously, we're trying to do it where we make sure we maintain the health of the workers and the health of the people coming in. But we also want to try to make sure we can open it as soon as possible so we provide the service. Right now, and we have talked probably we can get pretty close next month, if not actually do it. And June looks like it's a very solid possibility. But I'm, I am trying to move it as fast as I can, but I'm also, I'm not a health expert. I do not want to risk people. If I can make sure and be confident, just like I, this meeting, I, it took me four days to plan this. How can I get everybody in here? How can I keep people safe? How do I make sure that you know, we're not causing a health issue by trying to find out what's going on? But my hope is within four to six weeks, City Hall should be open. Maybe not as full, but, but very close to full throttle. And I, I will tell you, I've, I've started a program of training for AEDs and I and volunteer for my, the City Hall employees and I've had 18 people already signed up. So that was something they're signing up, obviously they're willing to come to work. So, uh, And more and more are getting vaccinated, which is obviously something else we want to do. So my hope, Anthony, is that we're talking four to six weeks, and at that point, let's go. And hopefully things keep going in a positive direction, uh, and I don't see you know, the rise going back up. It looks like the last week and a half statewide has gotten better. Hopefully if those directions continue, I expect we'll be opening up at that time. Other thoughts? Okay. I'm Terry. <laughs> Colleen Florio, and I'm president of the Ohio Taxpayers Association. And I have a whole list, <laughs> but I will uh, just be brief with all of it. I agree with John Brunel top of the list for the whole community is the availability of natural gas and I think that that has to be a major priority. I've been talking to a number of our businesses and one of the big priorities now is hiring. I was on the phone yesterday with Jake Perkins from Slancha. They are open they can accommodate now under the guidelines of the CDC and the Board of Health groups of between 50 and 55 upstairs. He's been trying to hire servers. He needs a minimum of 10. And there are health criteria people have to go through. He's only been able to find two. He's been at this now for three weeks. He's very frustrated. So that's, that also has come across with an automobile dealership 
people that wanted mechanics. There's just lots of opportunities all across the spectrum. And it's all different ages and people with different skill sets. I was talking with one of the owners from the cannabis industry recently, and he said the program at HCC for training is terrific, but it's down the road. He said, we'll take anybody we can get. They all they have to have is a clean quarry, and we will train them. And they start up the line. They're starting, I believe, at $17.50 an hour. That's not chump change. That's a good job to start with. But they can't find enough people. Uh, one of the other things here at City Hall, when people come into the community, if they want to get a DBA, doing business a certificate, so they can go to the bank, you know, my taxes have been paid, I can get a loan. Not here in Hoyoke. Here in Hoyoke, it's a multi-page document. You go over the bridge to South Hadley, I've seen it. It's half a page. That's all there is to it. Once you get that DBA, a woman I know here in Hyok wanted to have a small business from her home. It was $100 to sign up and $100 to get the license. She left and started her business in Amherst. That $100 in Hoyoke was renewable annually. Amherst, the full cost was $60, and that $60 would hold her for five years. There's something wrong. There's just something wrong. I agree with everybody. The condition of the city with trash, it doesn't matter if it's in Springdale, up in the highlands where I live, our trash day would have been Tuesday. Because of the holiday, it was put off until Wednesday. But they didn't come until Thursday. And we Can you just poke close to the mic there? Thank you. Thank you. We have trash flying all over the place today. It's very windy. The island program, it was terrific when David Hinley lived in town and he was still working at Tie and Bond. But he's retired and he's no longer here in the city. And we have islands that are a disaster. They're a mess. So the welcome into Hoyo no matter where you are, it's a mess. Not every one of them. There's one over by Lynch, even though they've been digging up the road and everything with the property coming down, it's beautifully maintained. But they're very few and far between. Communication. You've been excellent with it. But the communication between and respect between different branches of the city government has been totally lacking. And just the respect for the professionals that we have in those offices. We've lost a lot of people because respect was lost. And that, it goes a long way and it tells about the inner part of what the city is. And again, the permitting process. It can be a nightmare. I've talked with Aaron many times. I actually have a meeting with him every month. And they're working hard. But that's, it's not enough for the whole city. It has to work down to the little guy also, who's not going to be going into the OPED office. And other things that haven't been happening, I've talked with you. The city used to have MIDAC, the Mayor's Industrial Development uh, Advisory Committee. That was dropped with the former administration. 
And I think there's a number of businesses here today that might have been involved with that. So there's just, there's lots of things. You can't do it all at once. But just the fact that you have a listening meeting going on and you want to hear is a huge step forward. And for that, I say thank you. Thank you for your kind words, Celia. So, a couple of things again. I do not want, I mean, let me start over. I want morale and respect and, and positive feedback to be the rules in Hoyoke, not the exceptions. I think we've taken a good step. I've, I, I have tried to reach out to every city employee. I don't know them all, but I've tried to reach out and communicate with them that my door is open. Whether you are the lowest paid employee, you're doing that job. You have some ideas how to make that job better. Tell me what they are. Maybe I can help you implement them. You're the highest paid employee. You got ideas on how we can make things work better. Tell me. You got criticism. You think I'm a jerk. Come and tell me. That's okay. I probably won't like it, you say like that, but it's okay. But I, I want to demonstrate to every department head, to every employee, and to every citizen and resident of this city that I respect you. All, I, if we respect each other, we're gonna, we're gonna solve problems. We're gonna find a path to make things better. And I mean, I'll take a moment, because now you're making me think of my father. And that makes me emotional. And I think, Tony, you know my father, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, you know, that he lived his life. Be class, show respect, give respect, and you'll get respect. And that, I, that's how I'm going to operate. I, I hope that's the way I've done it my whole life. It's certainly the way I expect to do these seven months. And I think so far, I get the feeling that people are feeling City Hall, working for the city. We're becoming more of a team. We're becoming more of a respectful group. And I, and I certainly hope I can do that. Uh, and all those other things, I, I can't learn if I don't listen. I know, I know my city council colleagues say I talk a lot, and I do. I probably talk more than most, huh, Peter? <laughs> and, I, and there's a class act right there. I mean, he, you know, we didn't run against each other. We just put our names out there. And if he won, I'd be saying he's a class act. And, if, and he would tell me, you're a class act back, because we respect each other. And, he may introduce a proposal that I don't like, and I won't support it, but he won't attack me personally. He might say, well, this is an issue he's wrong on, and that's okay, but he's not gonna say Terry Murphy's a jerk. Are you? Okay, just check it. I don't, want, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, Peter. But, you know, I, I want, and it's gotta be citywide. We're all, we all have functions in the city. We all have a chance to have a better life or a worse life. I don't want anybody having to choose a worse life. And I've always been involved with kids. And I'll be active in the, in the school department. I mean, I've already talked to them about, we gotta make sure we have summer programs, not only to bring the kids up academically for what they've lost, but to bring them up emotionally, psychologically, socially, athletically, uh, provide arts and music, give them some things that are interesting in life to go along with the education. And we got to make sure summer school is not just, I'm going to go read and write. I'm going to go have some fun. I'm going to go learn how to play the piano. I'm going to go learn another language. And we do have a dual language program that's done very well. I'm going to go become an artist. I'm going to go become the best football player I can be whatever it is. I mean, those opportunities will get kids to come. 
They'll spend time learning academically, but they'll also spend time enjoying the experience and wanting to come back to school every day. And if we get kids in school every day, they're going to be smarter, they're going to be happier, and they're going to be better citizens down the road. I hope I answered some of yours. I know you had a lot. <laughs> we got about, I say about seven more minutes, so I, we're still open. <laughs> I should have got popcorn. I know that would have, I could have put popcorn and shown you a movie. Popcorn and beer from the craft beer. Oh! Yeah. Obviously, she thinks she's thinking ahead. Terry, Tony Signoli. I, I didn't want to say anything or a lot today because I wanted to hear from folks from Holyoke that were here. Springfield is home, business is there clients on the corporate side of what we do across the nation. For the first time this week, I have a client, a large client, that's interested here. One phone call immediately to Aaron Vega, good conversation. Immediately what I need to deal with with them is creating for them why Hoyoke. There's so much competition right now, especially given COVID, the economy, etc. Other mayors, other city governments, aggressive, uh, certainly so. And I heard something today from several folks, that word perception. I think Tony Soto, Anthony Soto said it. I think I've heard it before from Hel Helene, and you've touched on that here today too. There's that perception piece, you know? So we came, we took a ride through Holyoke, and I knew what to expect because I'm here often enough. But when you bring somebody in from outside, you've got to kind of explain things to them, you know? And we take them for a longer ride. We go and show them, wow, look at these houses up here on the hill. Can you believe this place? We try to tell them a bit about the history of what once was. And also, for some of my clients that are in the city already, uh, who have gone into some of the old mill spaces and, and done very well there, which is, which is amazing, we will show them that as well. I guess what I just wanted to say is, so much of this is perception. And at the beginning of the week, I was concerned, can I get them to come take a look? What I was able to do is send them a screenshot of your Facebook post that you were doing this today. For that entity that's looked this corporate client that's looked at Holyoke before, that was enough right there. That was different. That was an open door. And I guess what I'd like to respectfully say to you, keep doing that. Make as much noise as you possibly can. And, and a lot of it, I know, is difficult. You don't have the budget, perhaps, here in Holyoke itself. But you've got the good fortune you've got media. You've got folks like Dennis. I saw TV22 was here earlier. You've got a lot of opportunities. You've got to be telling the story, because right now your competitors are as well, too. And I would say to the points that were brought up a little earlier, for this particular client, we knew the gas issue right away. I have been able to get other clients to come to Holyoke because of that benefit of the Holyoke gas and electric. Phenomenal to work with, fantastic. But for this particular player, they're looking large. They're going to probably need better access, something large or so. I do echo that as well. And I hope that there'll be an opportunity to come and, and say, bring them, bring them here. We're going to drive around a bit again today and hopefully you know, be able to, to come and knock on your door and appreciate it. But I really wanted to stress, just that you did this helped me to get them to co come on and the great conversation that I've already had with Aaron as well, too. So I just want to say, keep doing what you're doing. It's seven months, but gosh, in seven months, you might be able to do 70 years, in fact, the next 70 years. So thank you for what you're doing here. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your kind words. And Aaron, thank you for your work. I appreciate it. Uh, and let me just tell you, if that person is in town and they want to come, I, I have a meeting at three, I have a meeting at four. If you can come by, I would be with them today. Uh, yep. Hi, I'm Ian Bresnan, a resident of Holyoke and a business, co-business owner of Holyoke. Um, I just want to say some of the good things going on in Holyoke, which I didn't know about, and I don't know if Tony does, but showing the people that might invest here, I didn't know until I'm on the Taxpayer Association with Helene, and Aaron Vega was um, one of the speakers, and he mentioned like new restaurants in Hoyoke. I know Crave's here now, and Tony, if you come, you gotta take them to Crave because it's very different. And then there's the um, Blue Door Gathering. I haven't been there yet, but another one, Avalon. These were all places that I didn't hear about. I'm not on Facebook because I don't really know how to navigate it. I was on it and 600 people wish me happy birthday. 
I sat there for four hours responding to each and every one. I didn't know you could do a group one. I'm just not good on Facebook. But if, if Aaron didn't say that, or like Jay's bed and breakfast, we can show him. And then I didn't even get the name of the um, businesswoman that there, because with the mask, it's hard to hear. But this has been absolutely wonderful. Everybody has said it. I know we're, you know, tooting your horn. But honestly, this is what life should be like, just talking things out and not all this on the computer and not knowing what's going on, but like a face-to-face. -face. Even if, you know, when you leave in seven months, if the new person comes in and you could say, you know what, we should do this like once every couple of months. Just sit down, hash it out. Not fight, not, you know, talk about each other behind each other's backs or whatever and the politics. It gets ugly. I don't like that. I like when people are just being people and just saying what's what's out there. So when you're showing people, there's so much good in Holyoke, and some people, you know, talk about the negative, but there's a lot going on. But we need to promote more business in Holyoke and not make it as difficult as it is for people. I remember when Gary Rome was coming in and they asked me to speak. I got up and I was like. Then we moved from downtown because we couldn't find space big enough for our office and our employees. Not that we have a ton, but there was enough. So the building up on uh, Whiting Farms Road, we put up some awnings with bees, and it, it looked great. We, you know, we had to do some cosmetic stuff. But I mean, they had to jump through hoops. If that was us, we would have said, you know what? We'll go somewhere else. Why go through all this problem? They have to make it easier for businesses to come into Hoyo. And we won't even get on the tax stuff. We'll talk that in another month or so. But this, this is good. And this will let people know what we need to do to promote business, diversity, uh, friendship, community, and Holyoke. So you have already done like a wonderful job. And you've only been here, what, nine days? Nine. Yeah, I mean, keep it up because it's good. It's just reviving people, I think. It revived me. So thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, I'll remember in seven months when I'm uh, trying to figure out how do I get up and walk that you all said nice things. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to get close to wrapping up because I do have to go to some other things. And one of my rules is try not to make people wait. If you've got an appointment at 3, don't be there at 3.50. Uh, so I've tried to do that. I've, so far, I've only been late one time, and it was five minutes and I had an emergency, so I hope that was okay. But uh, I want to thank you all for coming. I want to let you know I am going to do this, at least this, and I'm probably going to do some of the other things that I've heard. I know I'm going to meet with department heads, uh, and I want to see Aaron, Chief, uh, Sean. Uh, I want to see if we can make the process in the next month come up with, okay, this, we know this was a problem. Let's come up with something that makes the process easier. How do we do it? So that when we come back here, probably in three or four, probably in four weeks, that I can say to you, this is what we've done so far. And I want to encourage you at any time. You can call or you can email. If you have an issue that needs addressing, I can't address it if I don't know it. So feel free to call me, whether it's, you know, it's a slight issue or a huge issue. I, I will do what I can. I will work with our city departments. I will work with whatever and whoever is necessary to try to resolve the problem. That's the best I can tell you. It's the best I can do. I, I'm not bad for 72 years old, but and my energy's pretty good. Luckily, I was a young athlete at one time. I still think I'm an old athlete, but people have told me that's a, a, a fictitious comment. But by, while my energy is live and it's active, take advantage of it. Uh, I want to make sure that when I leave, I'm leaving saying, hey, you did a good job, and this city is better. So again, thank you so much for your attention, for your attendance. Talk to your colleagues, talk to your friends, talk to people that want to come to Hoyoke, business or live. My door's open. All right, we're going to make this next six and a half months, and it's going to, wow, Hoyoke has come up. We are back.